Hi there everybody, it's Rarity here from IncuButterfly.com Thank you so much for joining me again today for another card making video uh, Today we are making a variation of this card Okay, so um, this one um, I was making um, for something else and it just didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to for that particular project but I liked the, um, the result so we're going to recreate it today but we're going to put a festive spin on it um, with um, a online exclusive uh, stamp set that um, was recently released okay so uh, this combo is smoky slate bubble bath and a bit of soft sea foam and we've got this lovely silver um, trim the silver trim actually comes as a pack of two so there's some gold trim so we're going to use the gold instead of the silver this time and make it all really nice and festive okay so uh, this is the um, online exclusive uh, stamp set called um, Greetings of the Season. It is a bundle, or it is available as a bundle, with some brilliant um, tags as well. Um, so I don't want to use those today, okay? So uh, we'll just pop those to one side, but they're, they're great um, to know that there is a bundle uh, ready for Christmas. They're going to be great for um, labelling up your gift bags and things like that. And there's a little to and a from. Um, on there as well to make those tags um, you know look authentic and you can write on them and everything so um, this one's really lovely we've got some uh, larger sentiments um, here as well but also we've got um, things that we can mix and match with the fonts uh, and everything okay so I'm just going with the um, the bold font here um, this time and what I've done is I've created wishing you a Merry Christmas with um, a number of the stamps that are in that um, in that set. Okay, so I've just used um, some grid paper, lined it all up, and um, just mounted it all on one block, just as it is. Now, of course, because it's separate stamps, um, you could um, ink those in separate in different inks and and line them up. But I'm just going to use one colour, so I've lined them up and put them onto a single block to use in a little bit okay so that's greetings of the season and then you'll have seen that this was um we've got the postage outline on here this one was actually created with um using four of uh, these this size die and putting that on the card okay now this that meant that the proportions were nice for um the uk card sizes um but in the spirit of making things uh, simpler, what I actually did was um, the um, what we're going to do today is actually we're going to use the this um, second to largest die. So we've used this one and cut a single piece, okay? Because we ended up covering that, so there's no point having the four sections if you're then going to cover up the join kind of thing. So um, we're going to go with this one today. So the dimensions are going to be slightly different, um, but um, the, the four pieces gives you a bit more flexibility in creating the layers to make it fit the card that you want. Okay, so you've kind of got a, got two options there. So that's what we're doing. This what was this called again? Perennial postage. That's right. Okay. Cool. So we're going festive. So we're going to bring in some reds and greens. Okay. So um, I've cut some stuff ahead of time. Okay. Um, already got. Um, this is shaded spruce and I've got a shaded spruce layer to go on the top just to sort of um, give it that look. So I did that on here. I did a tone on tone look, um, layer there. Okay. So measurement wise, because the, these aren't standard measurements. So what have we got? Um, this is three and seven eighths by five and a quarter. Okay. So um, a little bit wider than I would have made it for that that height okay but that, that's what fits with uh, what we've got uh, we've got a piece of gold uh, that's three and a half by four and three quarters there's a white layer to go behind the uh, postage element which is three and three eighths by four and five eighths um, and that was all based on the fact that this is um, three and a quarter by four and a half. 
yeah so that's what I started with and then created my layers based on that okay so those are layers so the first thing to do then is apply the ink so on the original um, card I put the pink around the edge we're going to use red and to one of my favorite combos for Christmas to go with shaded spruce is actually poppy parade okay so if you want something a bit brighter if you put in poppy parade it looks really cool but of course we do have other reds in the stamping up and um, collection so so poppy parade gives you that modern bright look bringing in real red looks quite traditional okay but again if you swap that for cherry cobbler you've all you've got this sort of richer look as well so all three of those reds work really well with shaded spruce okay um to give you a festive look okay um in the same way you can substitute the the green um so um granny apple gives you a really bright look particularly with the poppy parade okay old olive is more traditional with the cherry cobbler there because it's got those muted tones uh, we've also got garden green so again a bit more of the traditional maybe with, more with the real red okay so by mixing and matching um, those colors you can get a completely different look for your festive cards okay so we're sticking with pop parade we're going to go for that brighter look those are all just going back in my beautiful stamping storage that I have in front of me so all my inks are right there in front of me stacked up and I can just reach for them which is fabulous so here's my red blending brush and we'll get our ink ready and I've just got some scrap paper underneath and um, I don't want this to be really heavy uh, so what you want to do is just load up your brush with some ink and take it off and that helps to condition the brush make it nice and smooth get away some of those um, those streaky bits if you like um, and then come in from the um, outside in okay and I find I can twizzle my paper from the center there you do you however you um, want to get that job done uh, just coming in a little now that that first layer of inks off I'm going to go around again but come in a little further okay and if you keep your brush moving you'll get a nice soft edge so I didn't want to want it a heavy color I just wanted to leave it quite nice and bright and more of an accent than anything else because that's the only bit of red that I think we're going to be having on this card okay or well, at least that's what's planned in my head things change though was in the course of the design process I do find so uh, we're going to pop up here pop poppy parade um, away um, for the moment okay um, and we will layer this onto this piece of white which is just going to help give, give each of the layers a little bit of a, its own definition if you like um, and make them stand alone so we're just going to use some stamping seal for that um, again you could bring in another colour you could bring in another shade of green or even another shade of red um, to to tie this together if you wanted to but I'm going to stick with the formula that I had on my original card okay and uh, you guys can um, obviously um, make your own decisions about which bits you want to do so on my original I put the um, the gold ribbon uh, sorry the, the trim the metallic trim um, around the white and then put it on there but um, I didn't have any I didn't use metallic cardstock um, I am wondering whether I actually want to have the, the gold trim go around the whole panel this time rather than just the white which I think would look nice and then maybe we can pop the whole thing up then um, onto some dimensionals just to give it that extra little little bit of um, you know what so let's layer that and wrap the ribbon or trim I should say it's not really a ribbon um, this is foil um, foil um, Sometimes it can be a bit tricky to um, have a real permanent bond with, with um, tape. You may prefer to use some wet glue with that, but just go easy with it because the, um, you know, with it, the moisture can 
make the foil bubble a little bit so just a little bit of wet glue you might find is more secure than the tape runner but I'm just going to go with it for demonstration purposes I'm, I'm not, not too, too worried about it and also we've got the ribbon going round as well so there's a little bit of extra security there as well right so let's get this trim on okay let's cut off some lengths of this about that and that you get loads on a roll so don't be shy with it don't be shy with it I'm going to take a couple of bits of tape here as well um, and we want to try and position this so that it's halfway don't we so where is halfway you could count the bumps I guess so if we count the corners one one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five it is there okay oops Sometimes your eyes can deceive you when you're coming to do this kind of stuff. So let's just take that into place there. Wrap it around, line it up with that same spot and secure that. If you wanted to put some extra on you could, extra tape, but I think that'll be fine. Okay, and then we'll do exactly the same with this bit, top to bottom, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and that's there, okay, take that in, and then tape. There we go, nice and secure on there and then we can pop that up onto our piece of shaded spruce, okay, that looks cool, almost looks a bit pinky, maybe I should have gone a little heavier with the red, okay, so some dimensionals on this. Really helps give a card a bit of wow without any effort whatsoever if you um, pop things up. So, nice, quick, and easy thing to do that doesn't cost the earth basically. Love dimensionals. Um, you, those of you who watch me regularly, know I use them a lot. Exactly for that reason. Okay, you get 300 dimensionals in a pack, plus all the edgy bits um, that you can use for um, like sentiments and things like that. So they're really good value for money. And you can get mini ones as well, which are really awesome for obviously those smaller bits. go and they fast grab I mean that that's on right ain't gonna isn't gonna go anywhere all right so that is it okay and then this can go on to our card base okay so that's um, yeah I think I can probably get away with my tape on that sometimes uh, when you've layered things up it's a bit too lumpy lumpy for um for the tape but um but it's just fine so let's just pop that on there now I'm just going to need to be mindful that uh, my borders are not equal so I'm just looking to make sure the top and bottom edge that's going to be really hard for you to see on camera because it's um, the same colour cardstock going on there but I'm um, just eyeballing that to make sure these borders and these borders are equal with each other okay and it's a super subtle thing to have that um, tone on tone layering but um, again in real life you know it just adds a little bit of something but if you wanted to skip that you could totally could okay you don't have to use that extra bit if you want a bit to be a bit more conservative with your cardstock don't forget as well if you want to um, 
be be cheeky as well you know um that panel that i just um put down so if this was a, if this was a layer that was going behind there and we're only going to see the edge of it it doesn't matter what's on the in the middle there whether it's a bit um mucked up it's a stamping mistake it's whatever or even a punched or die cut hole or anything like that if you're only going to see the edge no one's going to know okay unless you decide to tell them okay and that's it so um all we've got to do is decorate so as i say um i built up that sentiment um there um with um the stamp set i'm going to switch out the the heartfelt hexagon was what hexagon sorry was what i used on um this one okay uh but we're going to use the modern oval so the modern oval is quite good for um uh, and the heartfelt hexagon um, quite often will um, are interchangeable in terms of the size um, of the actual aperture. So if it fits around that, it usually fits around uh, in a in a modern oval as well. Okay, so that's just a little tip there. They're really really nice punches. Those two um, like the modern oval because it's quite neutral. So is the hexagon, I guess. And I think both of them lend themselves to both feminine and masculine um, designs. So I'm going to pop that sentiment down. And this is in the shaded spruce ink. And again, could have used the Poppy Parade. Okay, should we try it in Poppy Parade? Should we try it? Let's see if I've got a convenient scrap of paper. Oh, what's this? What fit? It's not that's not basic white though that's some of my um ah i can use this i can use this let's have a look at it in poppy parade and see whether that changes our mind just wipe that off before i restamp it so see this is just a scrap get some die cuts in and when will you see this that you'll see that in a in a little um it won't be on a video of the card I've made with that one, but it'll be on my Instagram. Please do check out Instagram. I post um, a few extra things on there that I don't necessarily record as videos. So um, have a look at that. I'm doing. Um, I'm taking part in. I'll put that away, and I need it, don't I? Um, taking part in a um, weekly Instagram hop at the moment. Uh, where we do monochromatic designs which is so much fun um, so you can see all the pictures of those cards and a whole host of other ideas all using single colours um, which is great I think um, it goes out on a Friday um, at 4 o'clock um, in UK time and uh, I think it's basic grey this week. Last week it was cherry cobbler. Um, but it's it's super fun doing these monochromatic um, ideas. So um, oh, I didn't punch out that one, Wally. It's it's been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I've really really enjoyed it. And it really makes you think about um, your supplies how you can use them differently because you're only using that colour plus you know some maybe some neutrals some, you know some black or white for layering and stuff but I like to try and keep it as close to the colour as possible now I am liking the green I think the red blends in too much what do you guys think I, I think so not that I can hear you of course but you can scream at the screen and go no 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 use the red but i think i'm going to stick with the green i think it just stands out a little bit more okay but you making your own version of this card you can obviously mix and match this uh, but i'm going to keep that to one side in case i need it for something else okay and we could invert the colors you could do um a puppet parade version with with um some green uh doodah Ugh. ink blending Sorry, my brain completely stopped working there. So um, here's another little tip then. So uh, we know that that oval will cover that. Uh, but what I didn't want was those dimensionals to end up stuck over that ribbon. 
so if you put it on the card as long as you're confident they're going to get covered of course um it means you know they're going to land in the right place on your base card before committing to putting your um little sentiment down so that looks about central to me okay and the only thing to add is our gold bow so I use the, the, the bunny ear method to tie bows and there are lots of different methods I've seen out there, some more complex than others, some using kitchen utensils, some using little tools and things like that. So however you make your bows, you do you, um, but I like to do it this way, pull that knot really tight and then twiddle about with your loops. This is quite stiff it'll kind of crease if you like so when I when I tie uh, when I pull that hard it's kind of squashed the loop a little bit so you might want to just bounce them back out again so they've got their dimension and I'm just going to make that a little teeny tiny bow this time it's not as big as the other one okay and then my tip for the ends is if you hold the knot and then bring your ends together and snip them at the same time they will be even. Okay, tying it on the roll as well helps save a bit of bit of your trim, but you get flipping loads of it, so um, don't don't be uh, don't be shy with it. Don't be shy with it, and of course, I'm going to bring in a glue dot, which is my preferred method for sticking down these. It's a bit of a small. It's a very small. Um, not though, um, so I'm going to double that over so it doesn't sort of peek out. So I'm just going to use my pokey tool to fold it over a little bit and pop that into place. Oh, cute, cute. Okay, and then um, keep the pokey tool handy. I'm going to bring in these neutral adhesive back sequins to carry through the gold. On this one, I use the um, there's um, some lovely smoky slate and grey granite pearls um, which I used there to, to complement the, the grey card so um, this one we're going to use these okay I love these these are really really nice basic um, for your um, your craft room absolutely love them um, there's some uh, newer ones as well not the um, that aren't sequins there's some lovely metallic gems I can't remember what, exactly what they're called but we've got a couple of different ones we've got these ones so so thinking ahead to Christmas and stuff um, we'll, we'll review the card in a second if I just grab these other ones um these two okay so you've got these sequins in these neutrals so you've got some sort of you know all of those uh we've also got these ones adhesive back sparkle gems which are sort of gold silver and then you've got that glitty black they're cool aren't they okay How they twinkle and then we've got these ones um gold silver and copper in their adhesive backed metallic gems that's what they are i haven't even opened these ones so i open them so that you don't get the glare of the packaging i like doing this as well now i cut them down the side now i do it on this side because i'm lefty and it makes sense for me to pull it out with my left hand if they're open on the left hand side so I pull it out that way. Does that show up better? Woo! Look at those twinkling. That's nice, isn't it? That's nice. Where did I put the packet? There. And then you can just slot them back in. Okay. Might as well pop those away while I'm at it. And then these are these ones. They're like, um, ooh, yes. They're kind of more faceted. Bit um, more subtle. Those ones, the copper ones. Don't know whether that shows as well 
on there but um, yeah and they get and you get the two sizes as well awesome so they're really really pretty and um, so they'll be really useful um, for festive projects as well okay right so back to reviewing uh, what we've done get that plastic out of the way because that's going to end up stuck to something okay um, using our perennial postage um, giving it the illusion of oh it's almost like a package isn't it it's like a little gift parcel as well um, with the red and green with a nice simple festive um, greeting which was um, inspired by this version with the the grey pink and green okay so slightly different dimensions like I said I explained this was using the four separate die cuts like this uh, whereas this one used that larger single die cut you know you, you've got options okay um, with that and I did a bit more dimensionals on this one as well okay hope you've enjoyed that it's given you some ideas um, to use that lovely um, perennial postage uh, that, that carried over from last time so nice to see it um, used again um, I hope you're staying safe Take care and I will see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye.